Okay, so I decided not to cut the millions of wires. What was it, 20 odd wires. I've, all I've done is I've looped it back, taped it up and put some of the original wiring's hard plastic coating on it. Now, it's in place. This is loosely bolted on, that'll be tightened up. Um, all the wiring's loosely in place and away from the rectifier. That's what I didn't want it touching, the rectifier. So everything's been kept away from that. So hopefully it won't cook. Um, and then all the rest of the wiring, I was gonna solder, because I've got obviously an indicator there and an indicator there. So those two could be soldered together as could one, two, three earths. Yeah, three earths could be soldered together and then wired into the wiring harness. But if any of these were to fail, I would end up stripping the whole lot down again. So what I decided to go with is, I don't know, a bit cheeky, but connect the blocks. Um, I'll possibly put some sort of bracket between the two light bolts and then dress that in a bit better. It all wants covering and everything. It all wants taping up. But it creates quite a nice package. There's still plenty of room around the regulator rectifier. I'm a little bit concerned it might get too hot. But as I say, on my 600, the battery setup was a bit different. It went down underneath this bracket here. Well, it was the tank bracket, the back hinge for the tank and the battery went down at that angle and I put it on underneath the tank bracket and it was about this far away from the battery. And I had no adverse effects with the battery, but it did have a lot more air coming through here and hitting it. So yeah, something to watch out for. Anyway, yes, the wiring's done. As I say, I've doubled it up, bent it back on itself, taped it all up and nothing's exposed. I've still got this plug, which I don't know what it is. And there should be a dealer plug somewhere. Somewhere in there. Anyway, it's in there. So yes, this still wants, this nest at the back wants tidying up. But I want to do the cowl first and see where I get to that. So that is the wiring sort of sorted. Let's just put that on. Right, so that's the backlights. As I say, I've got to black out this number plate light. As you can see, it's got a natural curve at the bottom, which fits in nicely with the under tray, which has got burn marks on it, because obviously I've been welding the um, rectifier bolts on. But yes, it's got a natural curve there, which fits better. So I don't need that. The number plate's gonna end up down there anyway, off of the swing arm probably so that's on there let's get to a break so brake lights as you can see the number plate lights up brighter as well that's all you get for buying cheap and then indicators there you go should be more than visible from the side now it's all very good and the LEDs don't flash when the the red LEDs don't flash when the indicators on and you can still quite clearly see the indicator going with the brake light on I did buy some of them strip lights um, for the 600 and when you was braking and indicating you could hardly see the indicator so this is definitely an upgrade um, so yes wiring's done um, slight tidy up and that's it so that's all done now I need to get on with the cowl the back cowl I was looking at a sort of a rounded cowl but I think it's too wide to achieve that that would have to 
be domed here and come back, funnel back, similar to the original cowling, the way it shapes back in, but because of the width for this at the back, this whole subframe doesn't come in much at the back because I needed the room to get everything in. So I'm going for more of a up and straight down with filled inside so it will be quite square. So yeah, it'll sort of come up there and go down like that, which is what I've got to work on now. So I'll get on with that. Okay, so I think the next piece in the puzzle is gonna be the cowl. So I want it to be flush at the back with the lights. I don't mind these sticking out a little bit, but not massively. So it wants to come about there. I think this wants to be a bit straighter. So somewhere there, this will possibly come up a bit straighter. Put a bit of foam across that or something because if I leave it just as a painted surface, the paint's gonna peel off with my ass rubbing against it anyway. So probably a little bit of 10 mil foam or something across there. When I get the upholsters to do the seat, I'll probably get them to do that. But something like that, these edges, this end will be rolled in. So it's got a smooth transition from the top to the side something like that and then that will be the return and I think what I'll do is feed this end underneath the seat a little bit and do um, what they're called rivet nuts rivet nuts either side to hold this end down not sure about this end because this this will come over and it will be a return on it to go over the top of the light anyway so I might with that flat bit, put a bracket on the inside to do rivet nuts on the inside to hold that down. It's just how accessible it is to do stuff like that. Or I might get away with one on the, on the back plate, which would go in behind the light. Yeah, might be, that might be the easiest, anyway something like that just a tiny little cowl just to tidy up that back end and to stop me sliding off the seat so i've chosen my steel um this is 1.2 mil thick so it'll give it a good bit of rigidity 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 that'd be strong enough first of all i've got to cut the metal to that size and then start shaping it. Uh, okay, so put a couple of folds in it, and I think that's about where it's going to be. So it's only going to be a small cowl. Um, this lot here will be folded under or cut off. Sorry. This lot here will be either folded under, well, it will be folded under to create a lid over the light over the top of the light in there and then these bits here i was just going to put a pattern in there to give it some sort of life and on the old english wheel i've got this which makes well makes that groove um it's not going to be easy to follow because 
that needs to be up that way. So all my measurements were a waste of time. Because <laughs> I've got to do them on this bloody side. You fool. Right, let's do all the measurements again. Okay, using one of the shaped rollers, this is the last of the three feature whatever lines. in the back cowl. There we go, should do. So because we're, because the ridge is at the top and the valley is in the bottom, obviously. Is it obvious? The item that I'm doing needs to be upside down. So when it's right way up, you end up with these these things these ridges just to add doesn't help with all the black marker all over it just to add a feature on the back end just so it's not plain flat metal yeah I thought I'd just do these ridges so there you go there's three of them don't stand proud by much but enough to give it a bit of depth so now I've got to fold it across here and I've got to do quite a, a very tight return on that and it wants to come back pretty much to here and it needs to be very tight on there I just want the, the tiniest of lips going around there um, because it is the return on the bike. It is going to be the return back across here. That will create the lid over the top of the lights there. And then um, this will be shaped in, this edge will be shaped in, and then a side panel put either side to box it all in. And then I th this front edge here will be rivet nuts and bolted down so when you take the seat out of the way you can undo that and I'm not sure about the back. I'll do something with the back but I'm not sure what it's going to be just yet. But yes initially this has got to be a very tight return so I'll have to make something to be able to do that with. comes as something when you got to fabricate your own jigs to fabricate your own fabrication. God blimey, is there no one out there that can fabricate fabrications for fabricated people? Or was that all just made up? That was a complete fabrication. Anyway, let's find something to fold something with. Hmm, that's about right. okay so it's sort of getting there put the lines in the back you saw that i'm just hammering over the edges it will be in line with the outside of this welding for these seat brackets so i've got to hammer it in a little bit more and that side will be okay i've only given this one side one slap so far needs a few more slaps um, and then I'll put an insert in and blow millions of holes in it with my welding. But that's how it's going to be with the folding. It's actually twisted it. So I'm going to do some more folding this side and see if that levels it up. Um, but it's not bad. It's not, it's not terrible. Hmm, 
something like that. But yeah, as I say, I'll, I'll hammer off the other side and then just hide to the lights. I'll make the transition a bit better between the cowl and the frame. But at first I've got to knock this in so that's ready for the infill. Um, this is probably what's making it rock. This front corner here wants a bit of a chop, I think. I don't know whether it's a lamb chop or a pork chop. Probably a pork chop, really. Yeah. Perhaps cut a bit of that off. Yeah, perhaps cut a bit of that off and then wang some more round. Yes. Right, wanging. Wanging and banging. Not that side. See that gives it a bit more balance. Oh yeah. Heard that. Okay, about there. Right. Edging a bit more. And I've been using the most rounded wheel he says, I'll just have a quick check, but yeah, the most rounded profiled wheel in my English wheel bits and it's quite good for this this top edge here it just follows it nicely problem I have is this inner piece here won't allow me to get close enough to give it a proper hammering not on these first bits okay that's enough for another tinkering in the shed it's fitting quite well it's tight on there fits in the right places yet yeah, my metal working isn't brilliant this is 1.2 mil steel if I ever learn to weld aluminium all these sort of jobs will become a lot easier but yeah that's 1.2 mil, mil steel so it's tougher than your average. I've taken a stencil of the edge. I think that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. That's the right hand side. Um, I'll cut that out of steel and then weld them together. But that is enough tinkering for today. Once I get all this discoloration from the heat and everything and all these black lines off, it's going to look a hundred times better. It's not going to look perfect. It ain't never going to look perfect. But it's going to look a little lot better. But there you go. Another bit done. And if anyone's wondering, that's four or five hours worth. It's just taking it to the bench, doing a bit of slapping, <laughs> bit, of, bit of metal manipulation, bringing it back, checking it. It's like this, this one's tapping in, but once it's welded, I know whether I'm going to actually trim that edge off or hammer it down. But first I'm going to get these inserts in 
as I say that that will follow that will leave that top rail showing by about half the width and again with the seat so the line should follow all the way along there should um, so you'll get the effect of the trellis work without being, a, being able to see all this shit underneath but yes enough tinkering for one day